There we go, on the fall. This is fun. Especially when they're like that. I'm gonna keep them coming in. It is a swim bait, so they have a tendency to want to throw it. <clears throat> Quality dark sleeper bass. Huh? Got them right in the top of the mouth. Really nice hook job. That was cool. I was just waiting for that bait to hit bottom. So it was falling on semi slack and the line jumped. The thing is encased in plastic. So just like a plastic bait, soft body bait, they hold it and I jacked them. Solid fish. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Fun. So this lake doesn't have any mapping. We did a custom map on this spot, Auto Chart Live, and I have that at the council as well as up on the bow. And I'm on an outer bend. We talked about an intersection here. In order to fish down both highways here at the intersection, I've spot locked the boat upwind. So I'm basically on the point of the intersection. And what that allows me to do from the back boat position is fire a good cast down that casting angle on the drop off and then do a 90 and then fire down there. So there's some real value boat control wise on in hands-free, just being hands-free, we're not moving and it just frees me up. And what I wanna do when I break down a drop off is find out where the fish are at. Now, this one has weeds on the outer drop off and it's a big weed flat, hits an outer drop off about 10 feet, a little ledge, and then it goes into sand and gravel. So I'm fishing this dark sleeper up through the weed cover just feathering it and then I get on the edge and then I'll fish it a little bit deeper. So I just want to stagger my cast and then figure out what the fish are relating to. Cool thing about this spot is I have mixed habitat. It's got rock, it's got sand, it's got gravel, it's got weed. And they're active today. I mean, this is just a fishy day. Ooh, you look at, look at the weather, it's overcast. Nice bass there, cool. Now we'll boat, boat flip this guy. Hmm? Decent fish, down the hatch. I haven't missed a fish yet. Well, no, I take that back. I said a little too early on one of them. But again, long cast, that fish bit basically at the end of that cast. Put my rod at a 45, let it fall, let it fall on semi slack. And if I get bit right now, I don't have to totally go nuts and set the hook immediately because it, it's a, a soft body bait. They'll hold on to it. So it gives me a little bit of time to reel down and have that bait under a little bit of load or that fish under a little bit of load and then, and then stick them. They're not spitting this thing. Drop that rod and a, just a nice slow, steady reel. If I feel that that bait rises off bottom, I'll just kill it and then it hits bottom. So you can kind of envision along these structures, it comes up. I'll kill it, comes down, comes up, comes down. <clears throat> Another little fish. But I found my lineup. I have found my lineup, so I'll just keep making that cast. Same spot again. This is a bluegill lake, so I'm kind of fishing a, a color pattern that looks like what the bass feed on here. A lot of different colors though, and really what a body profile like that represents is a lot of bottom-based forage. Gobies in particular, if you live in the Great Lakes region, you know, excellent job mimicking a goby. It looks like a crayfish. We have underwaters of this thing and it looks remarkably like a crayfish. So it can represent a lot of different things, which definitely talks to the versatility of the swim bait tactic with a truly unique body profile and a well-engineered bait that stands up on the bottom at all times because of the keel and hooks them in the top of the mouth almost all the time. So you can hop it, you can pop it, you can just straight reel it, you can reel it and pause. You can do a lot of different things with it. It's a get bit bait. Oh, there we go. Oh, it feels pretty good. You can see that heavy hook set. You know, it's fun with these bigger ones, three quarter ounce, the one ounce dark sleepers to jack them. I mean, it's got a beefy hook in it. So if I can fish a heavier rod combo with heavier line, you know, I will. It minimizes breakage. And look at that, you know, I'm able to drive a big hook home in that case. That's right through bone. It's right through the, the mandible of the bass. Pop them out. So I'm fishing a seven foot two heavy power rod. I'd call it a fast action. It does have some nice bend down into the blank, 
but it's got power to set the hook and if I'm fishing this bass up in the cover, I want to be able to get the bass out no different than I would with any heavy cover application. So with that beefy hook in there, don't be scared to scale up to a heavier power rod. This is an F7 Mega Bass Orochi Double X. It's a perfect pitch, so it's designed for flipping and pitching. For the reel, I want a fast pickup. And this bait, I'm getting bit a lot on the fall. Fish bite it at weird times when you're not expecting. So I got a Tatula SV here, eight to one. There's a big one. Big one, man. Ooh, I didn't even feel that. Wow, yeah. Maybe it's not that big. It's just when you set the hook on them 100 feet out there, the end of a long leash. They get you a little excited when they're big enough to load up a, a beefy stick, not a giant. Little overreaction. And where is he hooked? I don't think I got to say a whole lot more on that. Top mouth, once again, really easy to unhook too. Not beating up the fish. All right, little buddy. There he gives us, gives us our jump right there. That's a healthy fish.